Annapolis, you would go over the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, come down through Easton and St. Michael's in a straight line going to the ocean. And about, um, I'd say, six or seven miles uh, before you got to Ocean City in the ocean, uh, that's where Salisbury was. Uh, today, it's a pretty big town, uh, pretty successful. Uh, back then, I would say, it was uh, a lot of watermen uh, down there, a lot mm -hmm. of blue collar, uh, a lot of farming and, uh, you know, canning uh, were predominant things. Ocean City, as a recreation point, was probably extremely small. Mm -hmm. Is my, wouldn't you say that? There wasn't too much to Ocean City then. No, uh, Ocean City was, uh, there was only a, a dual lane highway to Ocean City. Uh, just a plain uh, turtle back Macadam Road. Wow. Uh, the uh, Salisbury itself was only about uh, 6,000 people, I guess. I know in town, uh, before World War II, there was only one stoplight in town. Hmm. Uh, we kids used to say, we called it the stop and go light. It didn't have a yellow light. It was just a red and a green. Huh, interesting. Let me, <laughs> let me ask you something. Um, I, 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 everyone's uh, probably listening to this and saying, okay, you know, where the hell is this surprise we're talking about? So I think we probably uh, ought to tell them, or you ought to tell them. Uh, I want you to kind of, uh, first off, what is today and what year is it? Hmm? W what month is it? What month is it? What month is it? Well, uh, August. August what? Do you remember the date today? Uh, I think it's the 12th. Exactly. In uh -huh. the year 2000 and, and what? Uh, 2008. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what today is. Now, I want you all that are listening to this uh, to kind of uh, just kind of sit back and kind of imagine if I were to tell you that his grandfather, his grandfather was, was uh, born before the Civil War, uh, there's a lot of you out there who would go, hey, that's pretty cool. That's you right. know, but that's not true. This is the rare, when he told me this out of the blue a year or two ago, <laughs> it totally blew me away. I want him to tell the camera, here, th this is your camera, this is your camera here. Uh -huh. uh, I, please tell uh, me when your father was born. My father, and uh, most people think I'm Fibonum, was born before the Civil War. He was born January the 6th, 1861. And, and, and the war started in April. April, uh, Fort Sumter. And, uh, Who was president then? And I believe, uh, if I'm correct, that he was born in uh, Buchanan's administration. Isn't that amazing? Lincoln had been elected, but he, uh, not he taken. hadn't taken uh, the oath yet. He wasn't in office. Right, exactly. And uh, uh, he was born in a, a community. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a town, it was just a settlement, more or less, called Athol, uh, A-T-H-O-L. Uh, locally, it was known, the area was known as Hungry Neck. Now, a neck uh, along the uh, shores here is uh, a land that is in between two uh, creeks. So, Hungry Neck was in between Barren Creek and uh, uh, it was uh, Quantico Creek. So uh, it was well, more, known more as uh, Hungry Neck than it was Athol, I, although I believe there, there was a post office there at one time. Now, the conditions there, hey, my grandfather, I guess he was an ordinary farmer, my, my father was born on the farm, and uh, he uh, he wasn't poor, but he wasn't wealthy. He was probably just an average farmer. Uh, the old house was uh, heated by uh, uh, fireplaces, 
My grandmother cooked on a fireplace, and uh, the uh, uh, house, uh, uh, I guess, I often wanted, wondered just exactly what it looked like. Uh, the uh, uh, house, uh, uh, the uh, uh, building, I, I guess they had ordinarily farm buildings. I know they had a corn crib, they mentioned one time. But uh, the the, uh, fireplaces, uh, the house couldn't have been uh, uh, constructed real well because my father said that during the winter in a cold day with the wind blowing, you could see uh, the rug raise up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's hard to picture somebody staying warm in in a, a house like that. And uh, uh, my father said uh, when he was a young child, his uh, first job on Saturday was molding all the candles that they would use during the week. Uh, I never heard him mention anything about a, a an oil lamp. Uh, probably uh, oil lamps were a little bit expensive in those days. Especially whale oil. Yeah. It was not cheap. No. Now, uh, there wasn't any such thing as kerosene. Kerosene came in after... Uh, Oil was discovered in uh, western Pennsylvania. 1859. And, and it uh, took some time, of course, before it was uh, available commercially. I've heard, when I was a kid, I've heard a lot of the old uh, farmers say, uh, I've got to go down and, and uh, get a gallon of coal oil. Well, coal oil was a derivative of uh, <clears throat> coal, and uh, the big cities where they had uh, retorts that would uh, uh, treat this, uh, heat this coal uh, to get the gas. So they had gas lamps in the cities, and they would use the, this uh, coal uh, coke or uh, the oil out of it to uh, uh, refine into coal oil. So that was the first oil that they had around in the, in the country. Now, uh, Father, uh, I asked him, have asked him a lot of questions about living in the country. Uh, he, uh, he said, uh, that they, uh, I asked him, for instance, if you got sick, what did you do? Uh, and you use if you had all of these uh, home remedies and they didn't work. He said, well, you hitched the horse and you went for the doctor. Hmm. You know, the doctor might be 10 miles away. So that meant that if it was at night, you had to go in the dark to the doctor and fetch him and bring him home. Probably on horse and saddle. Huh? Probably oh. on horse and saddle. Oh, uh, horse. Well, they usually went with horse and buggy. Ah, oh, buggy. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Now, I asked my father one time about uh, time. I said, what, uh, uh, well, how did you tell time? Uh, I do know, he said, that they had a, a clock at home, a mantel clock. He said it had wooden wheels and uh, pinions and gears. And my grandfather would crush walnuts to get the oil to, lo- to uh, oil the clock. <laughs> now, they, uh, I said, well, how did you set the time? He said, by the sun. Well, that's not very accurate. I, I can think of ways to do that. I, I should have asked him exactly how they did that. You probably I had said, a sundial, huh? a ru- rudimentary sundial. I mean, you can take a stake Oh, you can put mark a, it out. So you, you can put a stake down and and measure the uh, the shadow, 
and set the clock when mm -hmm. the shadows are longest. But you can pay off a half an hour that way. But what does a farmer need exact time for anyway? He had to get up probably before sun up, and they'd go to bed at sundown. You're right. They didn't have night lights. That, no. That's one of the things people don't seem to understand. No. In the old days, in your dad's time, that um, there was no electricity, there was no kerosene. Mm -hmm. uh, oil for people who were farmers was uh, uh, very expensive, especially the whale oil um, from the sperm oil. That, that was very, very expensive, and very few people uh, could afford it. So you had candles. But candles also uh, had a certain cost to them, too. And so uh, most people, <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me, most people at night, mm -hmm. they just went to bed. When, yeah. when it got dark, you just went to bed and you were lucky. Maybe you had one candle and you may set up and talk. Well, uh, we're running out of time. I can tell by the camera starting to blink. Uh, let me just ask you one or two uh, short questions before we wrap up. Um, mm -hmm. You have been married to a wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. uh, I call her Marie. Mm -hmm. You call her... Reezy. Reezy. Sure. Uh, nickname for Marie. Uh, yeah, Marie. And, uh, That's her middle name. She's totally delightful. Uh, she's, um, she's just great. And how many years have you been married? Oh, uh, I'd say about 30. 30 years. Okay, mm -hmm. well... I've been, I'm married longer than you. I'm married 40 uh, this year. Well, uh, that's about it. I, I wanted to thank Otis uh, for taking the time to talk to us on camera. Uh, this is probably the first time you've been captured uh, mm -hmm. on camera uh, talking about this. Uh, I know that in the last six months or eight months, a uh, group of people that I know that I talk to, um, th they really are in disbelief mm -hmm. when you tell them that I have a next door neighbor whose dad was uh, born before the Civil War. And, then, and what makes it even more interesting, uh, you mentioned uh, Irish. Uh, did, your, uh, did your grandfather come over during the Irish uh, immigration in the 1840s? No, they, they date back before the revolution in that same area. Wow. And well, the Leds. Well, the they're... The what? The Lloyds date back in that same area, in that same uh, local uh -huh. area. Uh-huh, right. Uh -huh. Well, that's interesting. It would mm -hmm. be nice to know when your grandfather was born, because with your dad uh -huh. being born in 1861, I mean, there's every possibility uh -huh. uh, that you, your, your grandfather could mm -hmm. have been actually born in the 18th century, and uh, that well, would be... Well, it goes pretty close to it. I think the great-grandfather, I have the... Uh, Genealogy? ...family tree somewhere, uh -huh. and I, I have to check that out. Now, people ask me, how old was my father when I was born? Yeah, well, of course, that begs the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, you know. Well, he was nearly 62, and uh, he... Uh, uh, he say he he married, had a family before he uh, married my mother. She was his second wife. Uh, he married his first wife in 1885 when he was 25. 18 no 1886. He was 25 then, and uh, when he married. Her, in 1886, my mother was only three years old. Hmm. She was 23 years younger than he was. And, and as you mentioned to me at a previous time, yeah. your, ma, your, your mother was a very strong woman, mm -hmm. too. And so, um, uh, you know, so everything, uh, everything worked out fine. Hey, mm -hmm. Car Cary Grant had kid, a daughter when he was... Mm -hmm. In the 70s or something, now, you know. Now, uh, in, by his first wife, he had two children. They were very young when they died. And uh, there was uh, Leon and Leela. Uh, I have the exact dates. Uh, I can't remember all that. 
They died in the 1890s. My half brother and half sister died over a hundred years ago. And that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> and I don't even have a picture of any of them. Yeah, and my father wasn't one for taking pictures. Somehow, he, pictures he took later life were of his uh, pile driver and the, and the vessels he built and things of that sort. You know. mm -hmm. But uh, they uh, he. Uh, lived in uh, White Haven. See, he learned the ship carpenter's trade very young. Blinking light. It's a blinking light. That means that we have about 30 seconds. So oh. we got to wrap it up. I wanted to thank you, Otis, very much. You're a good friend, uh, good neighbor. I love you dearly, as you know. Not too much I wouldn't do for you. Yeah. And I just thought this would be interesting mm -hmm. for everybody to see. It truly is something uh, I think is rather unique in this country. Uh, if there's a couple others that you probably put them on one hand. Anyway, thank you all very much, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Happy learning. <laughs> Bye.